Hey guys, welcome back to the show, and on this episode, I'm going to be talking about Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf. Now, this is actually a sequel to the movie The Howling, but make no mistake, this isn't The Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf, it's just Howling 2, Your Sister is a Werewolf. I don't know why they got rid of the the, but they did. So here we are. Howling 2. Cut to the chase. No more The Howling, just Howling. Now, The Howling was a movie from 1981 that was based off the novel The Howling. Basically, in the movie, uh, there's this television news anchor and she stumbles upon the secret society of werewolves. It was actually a pretty cool movie. I thought it had some uh, pretty good effects, considering when it was made. Then, in 1985, they came out with Howling 2 and I have no idea what they were thinking. This is considered by many to be one of the worst movies ever made, and I can completely see why. It's a total mess of a movie. So at the end of the first movie, our protagonist, Karen White, turns into a werewolf live on the news and is shot to death with a silver bullet. Howling 2 picks up right after the events of The Howling, but not before a very strange introduction by Christopher Lee reading from a book in space with the skeleton behind him. So right away, the movie kind of sets the stage for all the corny shit you're about to see. The opening credits roll while you're forced to watch close-up shots that are supposed to be spooky, but just come off cheesy because of the soundtrack. Yes, this movie has a theme song that you're gonna hear repeated many times throughout the film. I don't know how else to classify it other than uh, I guess like 1980s new wave garbage. This type of music, I, I can't stand it. It's never been my thing. It's just so boring. It's like, uh, I don't know, it's like a volume <laughs> was, was a genre of music. It's a perfect example of how music can really change the tone of a film. Uh, I have no idea what they were going for. So we start at Karen's funeral, where apparently, Karen isn't dead, she's still alive. I'm surprised that no one noticed her breathing at any point. Christopher Lee plays Stefan, an occult investigator who tries to tell Karen's brother Ben that he's in grave danger, but Ben isn't trying to hear it. So now we're at this bar where the band is playing the theme song and Stefan is there for some reason. No worries though, I'm sure he'll blend right in with those shades. What is he doing here exactly? I don't know. I, he, I guess he's investigating this chick, Miriana, who is a werewolf as well. But not just any werewolf, a super werewolf. So she takes off with this group of people and I guess they were driving all night because it's clearly the morning when they arrive at this abandoned building. <coughs> oh, I hate this. She starts luring these guys in when suddenly a bottle hits this guy in the head. Not sure who threw that though, because it comes from his left side and she's clearly well off in the distance in front of him. So she's transforming into a werewolf and bites this guy's hand off. And now we have a great example of how bad the directing and editing is in this movie. This chick takes off running and we cut to this point of view shot, which would imply that whatever is chasing after her is right there with her, but it's not. The werewolf is back still chewing on this guy. They'll keep cutting back to these shots of her for some reason. It just makes the whole sequence just that much more confusing. The one guy takes off while someone drops a box onto this guy. Who does this exactly? No one knows. It's clearly not Miriana because she's on the ground dragging this guy away. Or is she? Why is this shot here? And who is chasing this guy? I don't know, but there's a werewolf that makes him fall off the roof and die while simultaneously being on the ground floor to drag her off. And there's a shot of Mariana again, just hanging out, so who knows what's going on. So Ben and Jenny, a woman who used to work with Karen, decide to meet with Stefan. Interesting how we literally went from Ben telling him to get the hell out of here and that everything he said was bullshit to yeah, okay, I'll go over to his house. Stefan shows them the tape of Karen turning into a werewolf live on TV. 
Now I understand that maybe the production company couldn't get the rights to use the footage from the original film maybe, but this looks nothing like what happened in the first movie. So Ben believes it's a fake, because yeah Ben, they faked this whole thing. With the news crew and the set and the gunshots, just to what? Prank you? Cover up how she really died? Because yeah, this would be so much more believable. And even so, then how, would, how did she really die then, Ben? Ben, it isn't a fake. I recognize those people. So yeah, stuff it, Ben. She didn't say that last part. I added that in. That was me. It just... When I hate a movie this much, I like to take it out on the fictional characters. You know, just like verbally berate them throughout the show. You know, just uh, obviously a healthy way of dealing with my anger. And here's where the script goes into what I like to call sequel writing. You know, when there's just really cheap excuses for things, that retcon stuff that was established in the original film. Or they just bring in that piece of dialogue that basically says, Hey, you know all that stuff that you did to resolve everything in the first movie, which led to a clear conclusion? Well, it uh, turns out that stuff didn't actually work, because... No! So Stefan is like, hey, guess what? Your sister isn't dead because she was killed with silver bullets and they took out the silver bullets during the autopsy, so that unkilled her. Oh, and check out this werewolf. You know how the only way to kill a werewolf is with a silver bullet? Well, this one is immune for some reason. Yep, the only way to kill her is to stab her in the heart with a titanium rod because... Uh, it's just the way it is, really. I don't know how he knows this stuff. Well, I guess it's his job. You know, he's an occult investigator, right? It's his job to know these things in case a scenario exactly like this pops up. This is like his Super Bowl, really. He's probably been waiting his whole life to tell people this shit. Now, I imagine some of you, especially the younger members of the audience, are probably thinking, what? A cult investigator? What is that? Is that even a real thing? Well, here's the thing. Before the recession of 10 years ago, the economy was so strong that you could get a job doing anything. In fact, you could just make up a job and there was bound to be someone to pay you for it. I bet this guy just woke up one day and was like, you know what? I want to be a detective of spooky shit. Ah, you know what? Yellow Pages will never print that. Okay, uh, it, uh, occult investigator. Yeah, that sounds much more professional. Anyways, Stefan says that the werewolves are led by Sturba, and at the next full moon, all werewolves will reveal themselves because it's Sturba's 10,000th birthday. I guess she wants to have a party or something. So the werewolves are going to try and take Karen's body, but Stefan is going to protect Karen's body with his titanium rod because remember that's the only way to kill the super wolves you forgot about the steak what's he gonna do with that again drive a steak through a werewolf's heart yeah. I love how that shot is just cut in there as if it adds anything the whole movie is edited like that they just Cut in these shots to show exactly what they're talking about, ad nauseum. It happens so much that sometimes it just ends up being confusing. I'm gonna kill this son of a bitch. Ben, where are you going? Jesus Christ! Oh, the bullets. See what I mean? So Jenny chases after Ben because he's gonna go kill Stefan, and here we go again. Alright, so enough of that. So they go to the grave where Stefan is about to stab Karen's body and Ben's like, get the hell away from my sister. And Stefan's like, dude, she's a werewolf. And Ben's like, no, she's not. And I guess during that time, Karen fully transformed. And now the werewolves are coming from everywhere and Ben just starts unloading on them. Even this guy who's just starting to transform gets shot. Don't let him get away! Uh, 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 
Wow, it's a, it's a good thing that Ben picked up that net that was conveniently lying on the ground, otherwise this guy might have gotten away. Yep, not much he could have done once they threw that net on him. No way in hell he's getting up from that. <laughs> Anyways, he tells them where to find Sturba, and it turns out Mariana's been watching this. I can't tell if she's trying to growl here, or if she's just trying to clear something out of her throat. So Stefan leaves, it goes to find Sturba in Transylvania. Uh, anyways, it turns out that... Anyways, it turns out that Mariana is going to Transylvania as well, I guess to stop them from killing Sturba. And here's where she proves to the secret society of werewolves that she's one of them. She has the other half of the... I don't know, secret werewolf necklace? So later at the werewolf castle, there's some kind of odd ritual where this girl comes in, lies down, this old lady smells her breath. Then there's a bunch of shots of different things, which should come as no surprise because that seems to be the go-to editing style for this movie. Everyone in the room looks like they're kind of getting aroused by this. Everyone is dressed pretty suggestively. They're all wearing masks, so it feels like this could break out into some kind of weird medieval mystery bang fest at any second. So it turns out Sturba was breathing in her youth or life force or whatever. So now she's young again. Then a few of them go back to her room and what you think is going to be a somewhat normal sex scene turns into the furriest fornication ever caught on film. Meanwhile, the gang has to stop their car because of some lady who the locals claim was hit by a car. But it turns out she's a werewolf. So Stefan stabs her and then tells the others where are you going? Why are you leaving? I'm going to the village. I will see you there later. Okay, uh, why? Uh, we're all traveling to the same place. And now suddenly you've decided that you're gonna walk there by yourself and just meet up with us at the same destination that we're all going to? You you consider this a smart decision under the circumstances. So Jenny and Ben get back into the car, which is on the other side of the road somehow, but whatever, they just start driving. So are they going, are they going back or the same way they were going? Because if that's the case, I guess they just ran over the body of that lady. Suddenly there's a werewolf in the back of the car because why not? And check out this transition. Woo! -hoo. The movie is full of these and they're always different. Uh, I was a little disappointed, quite frankly, that they didn't get to a star wipe at some point. So spoiler alert, uh, they never do a star wipe transition. Probably the most disappointing part of the movie uh, at this point, I know you didn't want to hear that, but I uh, figured I'd just break it to you now. Back at the castle, two shag rugs are making out with each other, so not much going on here. Ben and Jenny make it to the village, and this man just starts motioning to them to follow him. Should we follow him? Why not? Why not? Well, what do you mean, why not? You just, <laughs> you just arrived in some strange gypsy village to investigate a secret monster society and kill the queen of all werewolves and you're just gonna say oh why not let's just follow the creepy dwarf like obviously you weren't the brains of this whole or uh, you know uh, operation where you been you f <sighs> see there it is again uh <clears throat> dealing with anger responsibly so he takes them to a church and emerges wearing the mother of all cargo vests and it turns out he's friends with Stefan. And Stefan tells them to just basically hang around the village and do nothing while he and his buddies carry out the hit. Boom! Hi, honey. Ooh, really got me with that one. I was convinced it was a werewolf coming to kill her. That was a, that was a total shock. Very effective. <laughs> Am I a little bit more bitter? I think <laughs> reading this, I think I was a little bit more bitter writing this one than I was the last one. <laughs> I'm extra mean with this one. 
So then we have this shot of them in bed getting ready to go to sleep. Jenny reads out translations while Ben cleans his gun. <laughs> then the movie has to tell us that it's the next afternoon, as if we wouldn't have figured that out for ourselves. I mean, the last shot was them in bed. Okay, that's actually a lie. The last shot was actually of them in bed, but I figured I'd spare you. But it's not like you have to literally spell it out for the audience. You have tons of clips to represent a passage of time. How about a shot of the moon at night? You clearly have those. And we already know you're not shy about reusing some of the same shots over and over again. So Ben and Vasile follow Mariana to the castle, but they'll never get past the guard with the submachine gun. You know what this reminds me of? It reminds me of uh, like some kind of shooter where you're able to unlock all kinds of different helmets for your character. Vasile gives Ben a few balls of wax and tells him that they're blessed, and that he should stick them in his ears and kills the guard with a throwing knife. Awesome, now they can get into the castle. But of course, they don't pick up the submachine gun on the way. I mean, that could only help them, right? Yeah, don't need that. Screw it. More weapons is just, uh, you know, it's just more stuff to carry, I guess. Sturba reveals to the audience and Mariana that Stefan is in fact her brother and that he's coming to kill her. He is my brother. He plans to destroy me, but I will destroy him. Let me kill him! Sturba sends them away and then casts a spell or something as they transform and honestly here we go again with the rapid cuts. How many times are you going to use the same shot of Miriana? Anyways as Ben and Vasily are leaving, Vasily's earplugs pop out and he starts writhing in agony from the sound of Sturba's spell. But he tells Ben to go on back without him. So then they kidnap Jenny and take her to the bone room. Vlad walks in with the gimp and starts smearing blood on her. Don't know what this is. And here we go, finally, Stefan gets the gang together because it's time to get geared up and go to war with the werewolves using stuff like oil, some daggers, and a very tiny amount of holy water. And a chalice which held the sacred blood of Christ. Well, that's kind of an odd weapon. I mean, what are you gonna do with that? Just throw it at somebody? <laughs> like, could you imagine that? Just, oh, ow, oh, oh, what the hell? Did somebody just, did somebody just throw a cup at me? What the hell? Wait, what? It, it once had Jesus's blood in it? Oh, 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 ow, oh, it hurts more for some reason. <laughs> I mean, I could guess I could see using it to scoop holy water and throw it at people, but there's hardly any holy water here. And why is that? Like, if, if holy water is an effective weapon to use, you should be taking a transport truck to Costco and clearing that place out and then just blessing the whole truck. And I know what you're thinking, Merck, it's Transylvania. They don't have Costco. Fine, fill up a bathtub, bless the shit out of it and start scooping. Oh, and they've also got a bowl of enchanted earplugs. So back at the castle, things have somehow gotten weirder they're having some sort of a grope fest. This guy's doing a handstand. I don't know what that's about. And this is all intercut with shots of the band performing at the bar. Like, it's not like this performance is happening at the castle. This is at the bar. So what the hell is the point of this? So they make their way to the castle and it's pretty easy to guess what happens here. They get attacked by werewolves and the characters that have barely been in the movie at all get picked off one by one. One guy gets dragged into a ditch by a werewolf and Stefan takes out a bottle of consecrated oil which acts like a grenade. Kind of a waste if you ask me. I mean, it was one werewolf. You could have just shot it and saved the oil for the final battle. Anyways, blah, blah, blah. Stefan stabs Sturba and everything is resolved. So I guess we gotta listen to the theme song again. And then we have this really pointless scene at the end where this kid comes to their door trick-or-treating dressed as a werewolf. And they're like, holy crap, that kid lives in the apartment across the hall. We should go talk to the people there, you know, and make sure they're not really werewolves. And then we have this extremely weird interaction where he says that he doesn't have a child and invites them inside. Would you come in? A little later. I hope so. 
Hey, Holmes, how are Much later. <laughs> uh, and that's your reaction to it? You're just gonna be all jokey, like, <laughs> maybe later. Yeah, much later. <laughs> Like, considering everything you just went through, oh, this is all just funny and weird, it's clearly not. And now we have the end of the movie, which consists of the theme song, as you would have guessed, and a montage of clips from the movie we literally just suffered through. And this is just incredibly ridiculous. They repeat the shot of Sturba taking her top off 17 times throughout this uh, closing credit sequence. As if that's going to make up for how bad the movie was. Just showing her breasts over and over again. <sighs> I mean, it can't hurt, but still. Would I recommend watching it? No. Unless you're really into fur sex, then... Then maybe uh, give it a peep. Christopher Lee actually apologized to the director of the original movie for being in this. And there was also a bunch of sequels that came out after this, which I have no interest in watching. But nonetheless, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time.